two sons and you just bought your own place for them. You're currently staying with your mother, but you're really looking forward to moving out and finally being a little more independent. But you do have an ex-boyfriend that really isn't too crazy about the idea of you wanting to break up with him, but you don't care. You move on with life, even though you talk to him every now and then. You even try to get some alone time and go hang out with some friends at a 4th of July party. But little do you know, on the way back from that party, you will never make it home. Hello, my fellow divers, and welcome back to another episode of Crime Dive, where we take a deep dive into crime. I'm your host, Lexi. Thank you so much for listening and watching. If you're new, welcome to the water. We're so happy to have you. If you're returning, welcome back to the water. We missed you, and thank you for coming back to take another deep dive into crime with us. As always, please be sure to check out our episode description. There you will find the links to my TikTok, Instagram, and a link to help us out over here at Crime Dive. You can also find my email for any business inquiries. Today, we are going to be talking about the mysterious case of Natalie Jones. This case does not sit right with me at all, and it makes me pretty upset because a lot is really not being done to find out what really happened to her. Now, there was a lot of misinformation that came out when this case first happened because there were a lot of things that people really just didn't know. Police were keeping a lot of things private from the public while the case was still ongoing. And there's just not a lot of answers for certain questions that definitely make people think that there's something more going on behind the scenes. But with that, let's get right into the case. Natalie Pearl Jones was born on December 14th, 1992 in Hogansville, Georgia. Her parents' names were Elaine Gordon and Gibbs Jones. And from what I was able to find, Natalie had seven siblings. I actually found this information and I physically counted to make like multiple times to make sure I didn't get the wrong number. And from what I counted, she had seven siblings. I also wanted to mention that one of Natalie's brothers named Michael actually passed away in a tragic hit and run accident when he was 14 and Natalie was only seven. Natalie was described as being optimistic, happy. She was a very forgiving and kind-hearted person, and she absolutely loved going to the beach. Natalie had two kids named Trent and Isaac, who were four and seven at the time of her disappearance. I saw a few other ages for her boys. I saw four and seven. I saw four and 11. I'm really not sure which one is the case. Like I said, there was a lot of misinformation with this case, so I don't wanna say one or the other without being 100% sure, so I'm just gonna put them both in here. Natalie absolutely adored her children. They were her in entire world and she loved them more than anything. There was nothing she wouldn't do for her kids. She was an amazing mother. But moms need their alone time too. Sometimes they just want to get a break, they want to go out, they want to hang out with their friends, which is very normal and sometimes much needed. So on July 4th of 2020, Natalie decided to drive from her home in Corinth, Georgia that she shared with her mother and she drove all the way to a lake house in Jackson's Gap, Alabama for a 4th of July party with some of her friends. Now this was about an hour and a half drive from where she lived in Georgia. She was just gonna go, hang out with her friends, have a good time at the party and head back later on that night. Natalie jumped in her hot pink 2002 Chevy Cavalier in order to do so. Now, I don't know about you guys, but you have to have a lot of personality and flair and creativity to have a hot pink car. But that was Natalie. Pink was her favorite color and she wanted to show it off. So Natalie heads to the party and she has a great time with her friends. She leaves around 10.30 p.m. to head back home to Corinth, Georgia, starting the hour and a half drive. As she crosses state lines into Georgia, she's actually talking to somebody on the phone. Now, as of now, we do not know who this person is. Some people suspect, but We'll get into all that later. Around 12.52 a.m., Natalie texts her friend that she had been with at the party saying, I made it home, thanks. And she was actually nearing her home, so she wasn't home yet, but she was getting close. So she just wanted to text her friend and let them know. But Natalie never actually made it home. So we don't know if she's the one who actually sent this text or if she just decided to send it because she was near her home. We really don't know. Come to find out, nobody had heard or seen from Natalie since she left Jackson Scap, Alabama, and the person that she was on the phone with as she was nearing home. No one knew where she was. Her family got pretty concerned and they decided to report her missing. I also wanted to add that Natalie's phone, Apple Watch, and sunglasses all went missing the same time she did. Police began searching for Natalie and they found that her cell phone pinged at 5.15 a.m. in Ephesus, Georgia. And that was the last time that she had any activity on her phone. 
Ephesus, Georgia is actually on the opposite side of Heard County where her home was. Police were like, was she taken there? Did she drive there? Was she headed on her way home from Alabama and she just didn't make it past this town? No one really knew. And this ping on Natalie's phone was actually a deliberate turning off of the phone. So it wasn't like it got damaged or it died and just stopped working. It was somebody physically turning it off on purpose. This was the best lead that police had. So they decided to search in this area on foot and by helicopter. Even Natalie's family decided to organize a search team and a lot of volunteers came out to help, but there was no sign of her. It was like she just vanished into thin air. But Natalie's family knew that something just wasn't right. I mean, she would never just leave her kids like that and not say anything about where she was going, who she was with, and when she was coming back. It just wasn't like her at all to do this. Not to mention, all of her social media and bank accounts were inactive, which wasn't like Natalie at all. She was very active on social media. And if somebody ran away, they would probably be using their card or maybe even using cash, or maybe somebody would have seen her somewhere, but nobody did. Things were starting to look kind of grim. But on October 6th, 2020, Natalie's 2002 pink Chevy Cavalier was found in a wooded area by a man who was hired to clear the brush on this property. This wooded area was by an intersection on Roosterville and Welcome Road in Roopville, Georgia, near Ephesus, Georgia, where her phone had last pinged. When police found the car, there was a lot of vegetation said to be growing out of the tires, the bumper, and the hood of the car. And police believed that the car had been there for a long time because all of the brush and grass and bushes were growing around it, according to them. The car appeared to have no damage to it, indicating that there wasn't an accident and that the car had to have been deliberately driven there. But police didn't just find the car. They also found a body inside, the body of a young woman. And after DNA testing, police were able to positively identify the body as being that of 27-year-old Natalie Jones. Before Natalie had been positively identified, her family just knew that it was her because who else could it have been at that point? They were really, really shocked to know that she was found this way and there were just no answers. And I think that's what made things so much worse for them was the fact that it all just seemed so mysterious and so unexplained and just unlike her. And now her children are going to have to grow up without their mother. There were also items found in Natalie's car, but those details have not been released to the public yet. So as of now, we don't know what they were. The discovery of Natalie's car was actually documented on a YouTube called Adventures with Purpose that I found out about through researching this case. I think they do amazing work. I could not stop watching their videos because they actually find people after decades. If you don't know what Adventures with Purpose is, they're a dive team that specializes in recoveries. So they will go to these areas and use sonar equipment and they will try to find victims that have been missing. Sometimes they find people that have been missing for 20 to 30 years decades and it's just so amazing the work that they do and they don't ask for a dime they do it all for the families and just to bring their loved ones home when i saw them do a video on natalie it was so eerie to watch that her car had literally been found the day they decided to go there and search for her and they said this in the video and i agree I don't think it was a coincidence at all. I think somebody got nervous because they heard that they were in town because it's a very small town over there in Georgia and they just decided to put the car there. But didn't police say that there was vegetation growing around it? Indicating that it had been there for a while? We'll get to that. Natalie's funeral was held on October 21st, 2020 at the Hillcrest Chapel in Noonan, Georgia and her family paid their respects to her for the last time. Her family just could not believe that this had happened because they just didn't have any answers and it made it so much harder to process the fact that she was gone. It just didn't make any sense to anybody. An autopsy and a toxicology report was conducted on Natalie's body and the results were made public in early January of 2021. And according to her autopsy, there were no signs of trauma on her body or any injuries indicating that she had been somehow hurt by somebody. There were also no signs of foul play, according to police, and there were no drugs found in her system. Unfortunately, the medical examiner couldn't determine a cause 
or a manner of death. And this had a lot to do with the fact that Natalie's body was said to be in an advanced stage of decomposition. It was the middle of July in Georgia when she first went missing. So of course it's gonna be much hotter outside and this could advance the stage of decomposition. Police decided to start an investigation to figure out what happened to her. And there were rumors going around that Natalie may have died of a drug overdose or that she had possibly taken her own life. But there were no signs of any of these things. As I said, Natalie was found to have no drugs in her system. So what really did happen to her? Police started to look at people in Natalie's life to see how much they knew about what could have potentially happened to her or if they could have been involved. And Natalie had actually been involved in a custody battle with the father of her youngest son. People wondered if he could have had something to do with her death because the custody battle started to get a little bit heated and started to get a little bit bitter. As of now, he hasn't been charged or arrested with a crime connected to Natalie's death. But if there was one person that people were very suspicious of, especially Natalie's family and friends, it was her ex-boyfriend, Jonathan Lawrence, who went by JL. JL had been in jail for drug trafficking, but he had been released on bond at the time of Natalie's disappearance. And this made people wonder, could he have done something to Natalie while he was out on bond? But he was wearing an ankle monitor, and when they tracked to see where he was the night that Natalie disappeared, he was nowhere near her. But according to police, this doesn't officially rule him out. Now, according to Natalie's mother, Elaine, Natalie had actually been a witness to the crime that JL had committed of the drug trafficking because they were together at the time. And Natalie just didn't want anything to do with him anymore. After three months of dating, she broke up with him and they broke up only six months before she went missing. According to people who knew Natalie in JL, he was not the type of man that liked to be rejected. And he was said to be pretty angry about the fact that Natalie broke up with him. Natalie had also sent emails to Jonathan after they had broken up, indicating that his controlling ways were a big reason why she decided to end the relationship. Not to mention her being a witness to the crime that he committed, she was going to have to testify against him in Court. And some people believe that JL decided to have Natalie killed so she wouldn't be able to do this. Now they still kept in contact even after breaking up. So people wonder, did JL know where Natalie was gonna be the night she went missing and made sure there was somebody there in order to intercept her before she got home and do something to her? 10 days after Natalie's disappearance, JL ended up back in jail for allegedly trying to hire a hitman to kill a deputy that was working on his drug trafficking case. And while he was in jail for that, he also allegedly tried to hire a hitman to take out another witness to the crime that he committed. So this just goes to show what he's potentially capable of. If you would take out a hit on a member of law enforcement, you have absolutely no regard and no boundaries. Who's to say he wouldn't potentially try to do that to Natalie? Just wanna make it known too, this is all alleged. As police continue to look into theories about what may have happened to Natalie and who may have been responsible for it, they came across a video that she had posted in a private Facebook group. This private Facebook group was actually started by Natalie in 2019, and it was titled Natalie Jones, My Story Is Not Over, where she posted countless videos just retelling her life trauma and sharing it for others to hear. My mom was with a very, very abusive guy. And I still think you need to apologize to my mom for what you did to her. I remember her. My mom told me I, I used to sleep under her pillow with a knife up under my pillow. I'd come home, there'd be holes in the wall. You would tell me to leave. In this private Facebook group, Natalie had posted a video where she was sharing a story of sexual trauma that she had experienced. And she did in fact name the man who took advantage of her. That is the only reason why I'm sharing my story is because I'm hoping to help somebody like, it, it, along the way to not give up no matter what. She was coming forward about her story. She refused to be silent anymore because she wanted to help other people that may be experiencing the same thing. Natalie was so brave to come forward and name her attacker and do what she could to contribute to stopping these types of attacks. But some people argued if the person that she named was the one that was responsible for her death. 
she exposed him to the public. They wondered if the person was angry enough to do something to Natalie because they were mad at the fact that she had exposed him. It's also come out that the person that Natalie named as her attacker was actually said to be a police officer from a neighboring county. The Heard County Sheriff's Department has been facing a lot of backlash for what a lot of people believe is corruption. They just felt like police were not doing enough to investigate Natalie's case, and they think that a lot of this had to do with the fact that JL, Natalie's ex-boyfriend, had personal ties to the police department. So I'm gonna make this connection here and I really want you to try to follow it. JL's attorney was married to the sister of a governor's wife. So in case you didn't get that, JL's attorney is the brother-in-law to the governor of Georgia at the time of my marriage. So this made people wonder, were they purposely not investigating further into Jonathan because they knew him? This town was very small and it did not take a lot for people to get to know each other. Not to mention, Jonathan had also had another business that he had been running that as far as I know was legal. It wasn't the drug trafficking thing that he had going on. But one of the people that was a part of his business was a big time investor. He also had ties to law enforcement and high political figures. So it kind of seems like Jonathan knows some pretty important people that could potentially get him out of trouble. Now let's go back to earlier when I said the police believed that Natalie's car had been in the spot that it was found in for the entire three months she was missing because of all the vegetation and brush that had grown up around it. Well, if you look at the pictures of Natalie's car, it does not look like there's anything growing out of the tires or the hood or the bumper. It just looks like her car rolled onto the grass and sat there. It doesn't really look like anything's been growing up underneath of it or around it. And this made people believe that police just said that Natalie's car had been there the entire time. Some people thought that maybe Natalie's car had been driven there pretty shortly before it was found because it's a hot pink car. Even if there was some type of vegetation or brush in front of it, how did nobody see it even through the trees a little bit? I mean, if you're looking through trees, depending on how thick they are, you can usually see some things in between them. Again, I don't know because I didn't actually see it, but it just definitely seems odd that nobody saw that pink car. And there were some volunteers that had helped search for Natalie that came out and said, we drove past that area and we didn't see any trace of a pink car whatsoever while they were searching for her. So people definitely started to become suspicious of the fact that police were pushing so hard that the car had been there the whole time when people know they had driven past and had never seen it. As of now, there's a petition for a grand jury to further investigate Natalie's case, specifically Jonathan Lawrence or JL, Natalie's ex-boyfriend. A lot of people are pretty sketched out by him. They feel like he has a lot more information that he's withholding and that he could potentially be more involved than he's letting on. But for whatever reason, police aren't really investigating him and people think that there's some sort of cover up going on. Yes, investigations take a while, but it's been three years and there's really been no movement or an arrest on her case as of now. I'll include the link for the petition below so you can go ahead and sign or donate if you would like. I have signed the petition because I personally think that JL needs to be looked into a little bit more. People think that because he has personal ties to the police, this could be a reason why he's not being looked into further, but this is all alleged. It's not alleged that he has ties to the police department or high up figures, but it's alleged that they may be covering up what he did because of these ties. Just want to make that known because I don't want to get in trouble. Like I said, as of today, nobody's been charged or arrested in the connection of Natalie Jones's death. And there really hasn't been much movement on the case. As of now, it's still open and active, which I'm sure is just very hard for her family. I mean, they virtually have no answers of what happened to Natalie. I can't imagine how frustrating that is to just not know anything after three years and doesn't really seem like anybody's trying to find out anything either. Natalie's legacy will live on through her children and I'm sure they miss their mother so much, but she was absolutely amazing to them and I know she's watching over them. It's really frustrating that there's no justice for Natalie because she deserves it. Her family deserves it and they don't deserve to just sit around and not have any answers about what happened to her. To know that whoever was responsible for this could potentially just be walking free as her family is grieving, not knowing what's going on, it's just upsetting. And I really hope that one day we do find justice for Natalie. But with that, we're gonna go ahead and wrap up today's episode. We'll be back next week with another episode. Thank you so much for listening and watching, and I hope to see you in the water soon.